Hello everyone and welcome to the episode 1 of Tech News. First, we have the release date reveal of KDE Plasma 6. Last month, KDE shared a tentative target of February 2024. Now we have an official release schedule for alpha, beta release candidates and the public release. They include the dates for KDE Gear and KDE Framework snapshots alongside KDE Plasma. The developers are calling this a mega release since there are many package releases happening at the same time. KDE Plasma 6 is set to make Wayland its default display server, introduce accent colors, shading for application header bars, embrace a floating desktop panel layout and set double click as the default action in addition to tap to click. Also, they are planning to bring forth a revamped task switcher, enable custom result arrangement in KRunner and offer numerous other enhancements. But don't get too excited, last minute hurdles might end up delaying the dates altogether. These are just the best bets we have got. Kumuntu 24.04 might not ship KDE 6 due to its late release, which does not allow much time for testing by the Kubuntu developers, while the relevant packages or technologies also need to filter into Debian first. So they might stick to KDE 5.27 with X11 for now. Read the entire blog post from the link provided in the description. Same applies for the upcoming topics. Ubuntu 23.10 was a great release with the all new Flutter apps and more, but now we have the release dates set for Ubuntu 24.04. Another significant milestone is the feature freeze, which marks the moment when no significant new features can be introduced unless a request for approval is made. This event is scheduled for February 29. 2024. It will be an LTS release which you all know means a long-term support for 5 years. These releases tend to prioritize stability over major new features or dramatic UI changes. Instead, they try to aim and provide a solid and dependable user experience. Nonetheless, Ubuntu 24.04 will likely feature a new Linux kernel, possibly version 6.7 or 6.8 depending on timing along with GNOME 46, anticipated for release in March. And there might be further enhancements with the installation process and also inclusion of missing features in the Flutter apps which were recently introduced. Canonical's Utkarsh Gupta unveiled the name Noble Numbat in an email sent to the Ubuntu development mailing list. In this important announcement, Gupta also indicated that the esteemed archives are now accessible for development. The opening of archives signifies that developers can now start submitting packages for inclusion in Ubuntu 24.04. The next task on the new release to-do list will be the Ubuntu 24.04 daily builds. These will be created and made available for download approximately one to two weeks after the development process begins. Canonical's Oliver Gravert has also mentioned that an immutable snap-based Ubuntu 24.04 image will be made available for download in April. The Ubuntu Summit in Riga Lativa will be visited by Microsoft. Just how humorously OMG Ubuntu says, Microsoft won't be there as a passive spectator, wandering the corridors between talks looking sheepish. Employees will be holding talks and workshops to showcase the Windows subsystem for Linux, WSL, .NET 8 applications on Ubuntu and Azure integration with Ubuntu's snapshot service. Microsoft is recently supporting Linux a lot and is developing a further healthy relationship with Canonical. Fedora 39 was set to release on the 17th of October but it was slated to the 25th of October but many of y'all were asking when is the release date in my recent Fedora 39 review video. It turns out the date has been slated further to the 7th of November. Previously we saw the postponement to the 31st of October due to a few accepted blockers. Now the number amounts to 5 with one of them being RC or release channel the word appearing in installation ISOs. This is not a very big deal but at the same same time Fedora seeks to mitigate any confusion so it needs to be removed. Another blocker which was added recently which led to the postponement further is media check failed does not display or return a message to the user that the medium is corrupted. Instead a blank screen appears. Both of these along with some other blockers are delaying Fedora 39 release although the beta version itself is very stable which I personally use. Firefox 119 is out with a number of new features. Now you can import your Google Chrome extensions along with other stuff while you switch to Firefox but only some of them work. 
which means the extensions you try to import must be present in the Firefox add-ons website. PDF editing was already possible on Firefox, but now you can even add images to online PDFs or PDFs on your computer. So you can get rid of some other paid softwares completely. Also besides displaying recently closed tabs, the Firefox view feature now provides an overview of the tabs open in each window, a scrollable list of the recent browsing history organized by date or site, and all active tabs that are currently open on devices synchronized with a Firefox account which will soon be renamed to Mozilla account. Furthermore, the history of recently closed tabs is retained across sessions, even if automatic session restore is not enabled. Additionally, media sniffing for media of the application slash octet stream is now deactivated by default, which means instead of the browser attempting to initiate playback, the relevant items are downloaded. While major desktops in 2023 to 24 are bidding goodbye to X11 in favor of Wayland, Linux Mint announced their dependence on X11 will continue as of now, while there will be work going on in the background for Wayland support. Xorg has served as the foundational technology for numerous Linux distribution for almost three decades. However, as with all technology, there comes a time when it becomes outdated and is succeeded by a newer and superior alternative, as in this case with the transition from Xorg to Wayland. Cinnamon 6.0 scheduled for Mint 21.3 this year will introduce experimental Wayland support in terms of timing. The Cinnamon team does not believe that Wayland support needs to be completely mature. That is a preferable Cinnamon option for the majority until 2026, which is Mint 23.x. This provides the team with a two-year window to identify and resolve all existing issues. OpenSUSE has started a logo competition since they are planning to change the main logo as well as four OpenSUSE distributions logo that is Tumbleweed, Leap, Slow Roll and Kalpa. The color green is reserved as the primary logo color for the project but color suggestions for distribution logos are welcome. The thin line of the current logo in their distribution leads to visibility issues. They have described the entire guidelines and submission process on their website. Visit from the link provided in the description below. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. For early access to Linux content and also for getting all the project files which are in raw format for these animations used in this video, you can subscribe to the Patreon and unlock them instantly along with customized con keys and auto theme install scripts. Make sure to check it out from the description below. It is the Patreon members and you guys who make all these possible.